Lead Stick changed just this week from extreme to even worse if possible. Since the drought started, this water has just been slowly disappearing. As California suffers through an unprecedented drought that we've been covering half the state. And short of some serious rainfall, we don't know when this is going to come back. The active well failures is at 1,079. That is a significant number. With no surface water coming in, wells are drying up. In fact, you can't even see water from where standing. Lake levels here are at 25% of what's considered all thanks to a drought that's causing some to take drastic measures. Now facing the most severe conditions. This drought of you. Everyone here has heard of California's But do we really know how much this drought is affecting our well-being? California is in its worst drought in over 200 years. According to this figure, a third of California is under exceptional drought. This is abnormal. It also shows that more than half California is under severe or extreme drought. Our, our lakes, lakes are disappearing. disappearing. Our, our crops, crops are dying. Our oil is, is drying up. up. This is looking very similar to the gold during the Great Depression. In the 1930s, the United States was also struck by the wraths of the dust bowl. Great masses of fertile soil was turned into dust and was blown away by strong winds, forming huge cloud dust as high as two miles blackening the face of the 20th century. This caused many hardships to people present during the Dust Bowl, commonly known as the Black Lizard. This storm forced many people out of their homes. The chose to stay suffered from coughing spasms, shortness of asthma, bronchitis, and influenza. They also suffered from dust pneumonia called the Brown Plague. It is important that we prevent history from repeating itself. Southern California is known to be the biggest air waster. San Diego is far from innocent this contribution. This is a picture from our community. Where, Where did, did all the water go? go? Where is beautiful San Diego? This has got to stop. A couple months ago, the seniors were asked to between volunteering for an organization or creating an intervention to help our community. What better way to help our drought community better than to create and build our very own aqua system? I am Ashley Banquel. And I'm Jennifer Guerrero. Welcome, Welcome to our senior talk. talk. We will show you our service learning. Please enjoy. Not many seniors chose to partake in a senior experience within the STEM field. For our senior talk, we wanted to encourage people and members of our community to consider. We knew that it was going to be a challenging experience, but we took on that challenge and it turned out to be a very rewarding and fun experience. We encountered many during this experiment but we kept problem solving and didn't give up.
So when Jenny and Ashley approached me with helping with the senior project, I was really excited to learn this about aquaponics. I have a hobby with hydroponics in my house as well. So uh, the ladies did really well. We learned cloning. We helped with the greenhouse, propagating plants, built the entire aquaponics system, and it was a real work with them. Not only do we all learn a lot about aquaponics and hydroponics, we also left something for the school to learn from and utilize in the future. In our service learning video, you saw we built our very own aquaponics system. But what is an aquaponics system? An aquaponics system is a soil-free planting system that uses nutrients from the fish to keep the plants healthy. It is described as a symbolic relationship between plants and fish. The plants provide oxygen fish, while the fish provide the plants with nutrients. We chose to system because agriculture is one of the biggest water wasters. This is why we chose to build a system that incorporates agriculture and water conservation. The central purpose of building an aquaponic system for our talk experience is to promote the conservation and recycling of water. According to USDA's Irrigation and Water Use article, Agriculture is a major user of ground and surface water in the United States, a for approximately 80% of the nation's consumptive water use. That is why we chose to build a system that incorporates culture and water conservation. The central purpose of the aquaponic system for our senior talk experience is to promote conservation and recycling of water. Studies have shown that aquaponic systems use 90% less water than traditional farming. Excelente. Because the sustainable system collects and recycles rainwater, it functions well in areas with water like California. Now, building system was not an easy task. Mm -mm. We over many trials and errors while building this intervention are to create an innovation that will help promote water conservation. We first started off by building virtual 3D of the aquaponic system to bring our vision to life. For our research, we love the idea of combining a hydroponic system with an aquaponic system. So we tried building various forms of In this picture, here is where the, here is where the plants go. The fish tank here provides the water for the planter. Water is being pumped up by this pump, having the excess water stream back into the tank. As you can see, we went through many drafts in order to make building this reasonable. Our first draft was over zealous in terms of our resources and skills. But as we edited and revised our budget and materials, we thought about how we were going to construct the aquatic system. We needed help. We had no experience in anything. We thought to ourselves, how were we to build something when we had no experience whatsoever? But luck was on our side. One day, as we were working on a 3D model in Mr. Kalajiri's room, he caught a glimpse of what we were attempting to do. He then came into the room and started asking us many questions. We were surprised to find out that Mr. Kalajiri had a similar system of his own at home. He also to help us build our aquaponic system, which was amazing because he saw a couple of kids building something and wanted to help. It really shows how much passion Mr. Kalajuri and the rest of our teachers at GPA have for helping students succeed. The few days were spent planning for the aquaponic system. He introduced us to Mr. Mendez and the project he had out back in the greenhouse. This is actually a hydroponic system. The, dif the difference between a hydroponic system and an aquaponic system is that a hydroponics doesn't use fish. 
we actually reckoned that we had many help and resources right here in our school. It was just a matter of reaching out for their help. And the next couple of weeks, helping Mr. Mendez out back in the greenhouse, filling in with soil. Also, with the help of Mr. Caligiuri, we had to clone plants. It was an interesting experience, cutting plants to them again. Though unfortunately, half of them did not survive this time. While we were in the greenhouse, we were given the opportunity to observe the structure and get ideas for an aquaponic system. We learned more about what materials we can and what we would do in order to make our system more efficient. While in the greenhouse, we got a lot of experience. We just wanted the hands-on action to feel what it's really to build on as young women. Not many women are raised in the STEM field, and we wanted to change that. We would challenge that social norm. But this proved to be how it looked. We did not have any money. And I also had a really hectic schedule, which prevented us from fundraising. So we had to discuss this issue with our coach, Ms. Alida. Ms. Alida suggested that we make a GoFundMe page, which turned out to be very successful. We reached about $175 within three and served to be more than enough. With the money, we went shopping for materials in Depot. It was an amazing experience finding materials and kind of building it right there. Presence attracted many stares and attention from other shoppers. I mean, didn't it? One perky teacher and two teenage girls did something on their own. It was an amazing sight. While Ashley was looking for more materials, I walked up to a worker and asked if he can cut the pipes in half so they'd fit in the car. He was with, yeah, but are you disabled in any way? Are you up for a challenge? Ms. Alida and I looked at each other, determined and fired up. That day would be the most encouraging day ever. It made us to realize how important it is to see women engineers. The next few days were spent building the contraption. The goal was to drill the holes into the pipes. Jen and I were very hesitant, so we kept looking at each other to prepare us because we didn't know what to expect. Mm -mm. So we decided that it would be safer to have Ms. Aladup supervising us, and we were right. The pipe was flying everywhere. I mean everywhere. Everywhere. But with Ms. Alida, we got the job done. Afterwards, we went to Kai Jury for advice. And we discovered we got the wrong pipes. Though all our hard work did not go to waste, we created many funny and memorable moments that we will keep for the rest of our life. Girls in our society have been socialized to perfect. But our project has taught us to be brave, to, to take on challenges, challenges, and to not worry about being perfect. So the next day, Jennifer went back to Home Depot to buy the materials, and we started the process all over again. In the field of science and engineering, you will try many methods, and, but that is okay. It is all a part of the learning process. After many trials and errors, we managed to finish building our very own aquaponics. Now, I'd like you to meet Ashifer. <laughs> As mentioned before, an aquaponic system, or say Ashifer, works mainly on its own. The plants and the provide nutrients to each other, allowing them to thrive in this ecosystem. So here is the fish tank where the fish live. We ran into a few problems with the fish. Yeah. They actually died the first time. Sad to say, though it was a rookie mistake. We just didn't follow correct procedures. The fish transitioned into their new ecosystem. Plus, the fish were already dying when we bought them. It's all a part of the learning experience. Yeah. Continuing with how the system really works. This here is a pump that pumps water up to the top. Now, we structured the system in a way that water could travel down gravity and just go straight back into the tank. And the way that it works 
is that it is soil free. In replacement of soil, we use coconut husk. Coconut husk, what is that? Coconut husk. It's a soil medium that absorbs all the nutrients that the plants love. We also use fabric pots so that the pl plants would be able to lift the water without having little fragments of coconut husk leaking through. This method is more beneficial to plants because we soil allows weeds to grow and needs other chemicals to keep bug pests away. It also prevents fertilizer runoffs, which results in dead zones, lowering the biodiversity. From our experience, we learn how fragile life really is, and we want everyone to know that. Our planet needs help, and if we don't change seed live, we're all doomed. That is why we've organized a day with our own Builders Club, a middle school leadership organization, a GPA to educate them about California's drought and what we're doing to help. It was an awesome experience teaching the kids about the planet they live in and watching their reactions and passions to change. We learned the beauty of trial and error and how important it is to not give up when failure hits. We have had building errors, fish die, and the system being tapped by third parties, but we kept problem solving and didn't give up. We didn't choose this project because it was easy. No. no. We knew this project was going to be hard, that we would encounter many problems. But what's important to us was that we kept fighting even when frustration hits, because we knew that nothing worth having comes easy. Carol Dweck, a famous psychologist from Stanford University, once said, if parents want to give their children a gift, the best thing they can do is to is to teach them how to love challenges, be intrigued by mistakes, enjoy effort, and keep on learning. That way, your children don't have to be slaves of praise. They will have a lifelong way to build and repair their own confidence. While we experienced setbacks, Ms. Aladuff once said that Jennifer and I faced every challenge with poise and an open mind. Our learning journey has taught that there is a strikingly low percentage of sand minorities involved in the science and engineering field. Regardless of our race, gender, and economic background, we want to encourage the students of Gompers Preparatory Academy to the exciting and challenging world of science and engineering. With that said, I'd like to share with you that Ashley and I will be attending UC on a full scholarship as biochem majors. Thank you. This concludes our senior talk.